Howdy, everyone, Potcher here with an Age of Magic video, and in today's video, we're jumping into a hero spotlight for Siri, the rogue of the Guardians of Order, or the Gu faction. As usual, we'll go over her stats, her abilities, her animations, and talk a little bit about this character and where she could be used. We are going over her stats at completely maxed out, gear 15, 7 arcane stars, 7 gold stars, and we'll both go over her non-awakened and awakened abilities, their descriptions and what changes when they are awakened. But jumping into the stats, we have hit points at 19 million, just shy of 20 million, speed 258, armor is 113k, magic damage resistance 201k, basic damage 2.1 million, crit hit chance is 43%, and critical damage is 36 and the more in-depth stats are here for you to stop, have a look at whatever you want, and use the information however you see fit. So we'll jump into the arena now. We'll check out her abilities and what she is capable of. And yeah, we'll go from there. Jumping into the arena, we have Ciri's basic attack dissection. Deals two strikes to one target. If the enemy is a dark character, the damage will be critical. Moving on to the Awakened cast one stack of Sacrificial Blood on the enemy. So we'll need to go over what Sacrificial Blood is, but it'll make sense soon enough. Checking out the animations though, let's go ahead, which we'll take the middle gatekeeper this time and take that down and, all right, it's pretty cool. Dashes across the field, uses her blades on her arm bands to attack, does pretty decent damage. And as you can see, the sacrificial blood is on there. And because she strikes twice, it applies two stacks of it as well. So pretty nice, but again, we'll need to go over the sacrificial blood to determine whether or not this awakening would be worth it in the slightest. But We'll get there. We'll get there. Moving on to series second ability, we have Blade Screen. Deals two strikes to all enemies. Cast Parry on the caster for two turns. The enemy attacking Siri will deal 70% of outgoing damage counted before reduction to themselves. Damage received by Siri is reduced by 30%. So it's the same buff that Yuki gives to herself. Damage dealt will ignore shields, armor, and damage reduction effect with a 25% chance per allied Kinepic Jar. So conditional on Kinepic Jars being on the field. And the awakening of the skill, the chance to deal critical damage is increased by 10% per allied Kinopic jars. So it's a the ability is a bit dependent on the Kinopic jars being on the field, which means you need to have allies on your team dead, essentially. And the benefit though from this is the parry. It's going to give her a lot of survivability and allow her to last longer than most squishy characters she's quite squishy uh completely maxed out she's at 19 million hp they're not the lowest hp by far it's gonna take a bit for her to survive now looking at the animation of the ability we're going to go ahead and use it beautiful beautiful love it not insane damage but i guess the ability is a split between damage and utility the parry itself is invaluable to her giving her a lot of survivability so considering what the faction can do as a whole her damage isn't necessarily carrying the team. The damage is split quite evenly amongst a lot of these characters. Omphus can deal a lot. Siri can deal a lot. The healer, Impus, can deal a lot of damage as well. I think it would be ridiculous if she was a heavy damage dealer, like Morrigan, for example, when the whole team in general is dealing out damage. But she's also not getting a lot of benefits from buffs because it's a team that doesn't really rely on buffs like i said this is probably one of the few buffs we've seen that actually is applied to the character which is very interesting because it is still considered a buff so you have to be careful when going up against factions like the van norse now one buff isn't going to make a huge difference when versing the van norse but but it may make a difference when versing the van norse in the nightmare raid because there are some insane things in there that can absolutely turn the tide of battle if you use an ability that buffs or debuffs. For example, the Ulfran boss node. If you apply a buff to yourself, and I'm pretty sure it's been set to 100% trigger, um, there's five Ulfrans, and they will all counterattack, and they will kill a target outright. So just be a little bit careful. That's like the only situation. Very, very specific situation, but it's just worth mentioning because... It's just nice to consider things like that. So there we go. There is her AoE. Not insane damage. Gives herself a bit of survivability. But again, you're not relying purely on her to get damage out from this team. Moving on to her third ability, we have Blade Weave. Deals five strikes to one target. The chance to deal critical damage with every hit is increased by 10% for every stack of sacrificial blood on the enemy. 
has a 50% chance per hit to reduce the enemy's initiative by 20%. Awakening this ability is going to get you the effect of every attack has a 50% chance to cast Sacrificial Blood. So this is probably one of the important awakenings for the hero. The Sacrificial Blood being applied is then going to allow you to chance to do critical damage is increase. So it's essentially buffing it as it's being used. Deals five strikes, each one has a 20% chance to reduce the initiative, or 50% chance, sorry, to reduce initiative by 20%. So again, a lot of utility built into this ability. Let's go ahead and use it. It doesn't matter who, let's use it on this middle one again. So we're gonna go ahead and boom, 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 boom. Okay, he's dead. Wow, okay, so yeah, okay. A little bit of damage, a little bit of damage with that. And uh, I mean, you saw his initiative be reduced anyway while it was being used. So whether or not we killed him, we was going to have pretty much zero initiative from that. Wow, that was um, that was quick. That was quick. There you go. There's her damage. It's not from her AOE. It's from her single target ability. There you go. Not bad. I think the Awakening, again, is pretty important for this ability because it's going to benefit her other abilities as well. And we'll move on to her passive and see if... What's that? What well, that's going to add to her. I mean, hopefully it adds something with the sacrificial, but I feel like that's her, her bread and butter. Going over series passive, we have uh, Edge of Dawn. When an allied guardian with a shield is attacked by a dark enemy, Syria will counter attack that enemy. When the attacker is a light enemy, she has a 60% chance to counter. An attack on all allies causes one counter. When Syria dies, a canopic jar appears in her place. She cannot be revived. She can only come back out of a canopic jar. When Syria deals critical damage to an enemy, her initiative increases by 15%. Increases other allies' chance to deal critical damage by 50% in Cradle of Chaos and Rate. Awakening this ability. When critical damage is dealt to an enemy with provocation, the effect is removed. So she can remove taunt from an enemy. Not a super important awakening. If we are looking at this hero, I think the important awakenings are her third, where we can apply Sacrificial Blood. Every attack is a 50% chance to uh, cast Sacrificial Blood. And possibly her basic. Now, you're probably wondering, whoa, 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 Polcho, Polcho, Polcho. What are you talking about awakening her basic ability? You've never or very rarely recommended a basic. I know, I know. But hear me out. This is two strikes, casting one sacrificial blood per strike. So two sacrificial blood debuffs on. And we have a... This has more guarantee of applying sacrificial blood than this. And this ability is obviously a cooldown. It's a special ability. So in terms of what is getting the most sacrificial blood out there, her basic is outperforming her third ability. Mind you, this is five strikes in a row but each one has a 50% chance. So, I mean, you're looking at two to three stacks per use of this ability. It's on a... It doesn't say, where is it? Either way, it's, it doesn't matter, it's, it's on cooldown. So why is this sacrificial blood so important? Because if you remember, if you remember what our friend Impus does, when attacking an enemy with the Sacrificial Blood debuff, the ally will restore 15% of their max HP per stack. Impus is the healer, but he doesn't perform well in the terms of healing. He was an ally with the lowest HP, 40% of their max HP per ally canopic jar. I mean, performs damage if the target has... Target died. You see, he's not, his abilities aren't really healing. This is one healing ability he has. His healing is going to come from his passive combined with Ciri's Sacrificial Blood. So, the idea would be to just get, get blood out there. I mean, let's have a look. Let's go ahead and cast our... I, I think this is going to kill. Yeah, it's going to kill. We don't even really get a proper look at, at it. But, I mean, we go two Sacrificial Bloods there. We got two sacrificial bloods there. Remind you again, we're getting initiative as well for our crits. Um, so yeah, we're getting thirty percent max HP restored. If I do a little magic here, I can't do it. Sorry, I lied. I lied. I lied. But um, yeah, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. This is probably one of the only ways you're getting sufficient healing from this faction, and that's through Impus's passive being awakened and 
this is not going to one shot. This ability is not one shotting a, a regular hero in today's meta. But yeah, this is going to be the best way to get healing for this faction. Now, downsides to this is Sacrificial Blood is a debuff, so it can be cleansed, um, which is going to obviously take a lot of healing away from the team. So yeah, honestly, I think this basic is, is potentially worth awakening. I really do. It's just gonna it's just gonna allow you to get healing, which is gonna be important in raids, event raids. I'm not event raids, sorry, nightmare raid. PvP, it's not gonna matter so much. Maybe in tournament you might get a little bit out of it. But again, you just gotta be careful. So many factions can protect themselves from debuffs and cleanse debuffs. So it's really gonna come down to when this team is actually released, seeing it in action, seeing people use it and how effective it is. But it's just a really good combination between these two heroes, but it requires the awakening. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability and wherever you are in the world. Until next time, please take care of yourself.